Hi, this is Paul from finishyoursong.com and it's hello to Windows 10. I've been waiting to upgrade since they announced Windows 10, but of course I've been mindful of the warnings on the Steinberg website that Cubase and Nuendo weren't compatible with the early versions of Windows 10. There were timing issues. However, a couple of weeks ago Steinberg announced that these had been resolved and so I upgraded and I thought it would be good to share um, my experience of the upgrade process. Now the first thing I have to say is it was painless. I'd, I'd clicked the little Windows 10 icon that appeared and it duly downloaded all the files and I took a, a deep breath, hit go and walked away. Um, rather than sit there for 40 minutes or however long it took. Because it didn't take that long to upgrade my machine to Windows 10. Once I'd upgraded it, there were a few issues that I, I had to overcome. And that's partly down to the fact that I use a dock and a double monitor setup. And it took a while for me to sort that out. One of the issues I had was that by default Windows 10 decided to reduce the screen resolution on my external monitor, which meant I, I took me a while to work out how to, to get that back. And in the end it was a simple matter of, of resetting the resolution in the device manager, in the display manager rather. Turning to Cubase, everything worked remarkably well. Um, but there are two things that I encountered that I want to talk about specifics um, and because they are the only things really in the transition from Windows 7 which is what I had before to Windows 10. I'd expected to have to reinstall a lot of stuff. As it turned out everything worked pretty well apart from two things needed sorting out. Um, one of them is the headset that I'm using to record this video. I had to reset the presets. Um, I had to reinstall it when I plugged in, or rather Windows reinstalled it when I plugged it in this morning to record the video. And then when I came in, the preset that I had in the device manager didn't work. My VST connections preset didn't work. It wasn't finding this listed as the HP digital headset. It was finding it listed as USB audio device. And because it was looking for one and not the other, I had to rebuild the preset, which took me oh, about 30 seconds once I'd sussed out what was going on. One thing that did take a little while longer to sort out was my Korg Legacy uh, collection. I had the Korg Legacy collection running in 32-bit and I'm using JBridge to get my 32-bit plugins to work in, in this because I'm using Cubase Pro 8 in 64-bit and it really wasn't having it, particularly for the M1. Couldn't find the M1 at first. I knew it was installed because I knew I'd had it before I did the upgrade. And I found it eventually having migrated into my effects VSTs rather than my instrument VSTs. And when I rebridged it, it sorted it out until I renamed it back to M1 rather than M164. At which point Cubase promptly dumped it back into the effects VSTs folders. So that was that was quite annoying. In the end, what I did was I downloaded the 64-bit installers that are now available for the Legacy Collection and installed them. You still have to bridge the MDEX multi-effects unit. That appears to be resolutely 32-bit, but the M1 and the Wave Station, and I particularly use the Wave Station uh, quite a bit in my own music, they um, worked like a charm and they're now 64-bit and that's one less thing to worry about. So that's them. The other thing that I came across was that the VST performance when you're not using an audio interface is better. Um, why wouldn't you be using your audio interface? 
well, I don't use my audio interface when I'm recording these videos because I use the HP digital headset on the USB. And previously, anything that was highly intensive for processor power or sample reading, even though I've got an SSD drive for my sample library, was beginning to cause glitches. Um, this is a prime example. This is a, an instrumental track I'm working on. And I haven't added the bass yet, but we've got one instance of Easy Drummer, and then count them. One, two, three, four, five instances of contact. You'll actually see from the little padlock here, I've frozen the ukulele tracks because the thing was becoming unmanageable. And it's particularly unmanageable when you reflect that I've got session horns running. Uh, session horns is an absolute CPU and memory hog. It requires four gig of RAM when it's loaded in. It's just a pig. What I was finding was the VST performance was the average load was kind of up here somewhere and the real-time peak was barely moving. Now that I've got Windows 10 installed, as you can see, they're more or less working at, this, at the same rate. I've still got a higher average load than a real-time peak. And if I was to set this going at the moment when all the different instances of contact kick in, you do get um, the little red thing on the right-hand side going blip and you get a momentary interruption in the audio. So it's not perfect, but I can live with that for the time that I'm not using my normal um, audio interface. When I have my Line 6 audio interface plugged in, the VST performance is much better and I don't get the peaks. So that's an issue that I became aware of. Um, but other than that, I've been very happy with Windows 10 generally and with the behavior of Cubase and my projects and my VSTs. I haven't done any audio recording yet with it. That's something I tend to do in batches and I haven't got around to doing the latest uh, batch of guitar parts and vocal stuff. So if I have a problem with that, I'll come back to that later. But in the meantime, um, I have to say, my experience has been very positive and uh, if you've got any experiences to the contrary or you'd like to confirm that that's been your experience why don't you add a comment uh, below and uh, we'll, we'll see if we get some feedback on that but uh, but there you go that's that and until next time you take care of yourselves <laughs>